So the new iPhone 10, iPhone X has just been announced. I stayed in the office yesterday to watch this and to also get my client work done and to do a few bits and bobs. And I, if you don't know, I am a huge fan of Apple. I am what is known as an Apple fanboy. I've never had an Android phone. I've always liked the simplicity of Apple and the ease of use, the reliability of their work and what they give to their consumers, even at the high price tag. I do a lot of my drawing with my iPad. I put it on my iPhone and I publish it to Instagram or I put it on my laptop or my iMac and it's all Apple ran. It's very strange how they've monopolized on a lot of my job. Now when the iPhone 10 was announced, I wasn't really surprised by any of the features because I've been following the leaks and the rumors that have been going on ever since it started. And a few weeks ago, someone actually gave the confirmation that the iPhone design is going to be ridiculously true and it's gonna happen. Embedded somewhere inside of iOS 11 or somewhere, someone found this icon, this blue icon of an iPhone 10 or iPhone X inside there. And this has got me thinking about the design trends of Apple. Apple's been known to say less is more. They're trying to simplify the whole tech industry. You see this through the iMac where you just plug it in and go. Ever since it first started, the laptops have been pretty simple for the average consumer. They invented the mouse. It's, it's an incredible feat of Apple to create these amazing things. Now we all know that iPhone is not the first to come out with a bezel-less display. Apple didn't first create that. It was like Samsung and these other products because of where technology is going. Now I'm a designer, I'm a logo designer and a hand lettering artist and I make these videos on here and I thought it'd be really cool if I was to share with you my thoughts on the new design of the iPhone X. And before you start to worry about what I'm going to say and nitpick about it, I'm not going to nitpick because all it really is is an evolution of what's going on. The first thing, I love the bezel-less display of the new iPhone X. I'm looking at the icon here and I'm looking at the website as well. The bezel-less display is just beautiful beautiful. I like it a lot. I have the iPhone 7 Plus here and we've known that it's been outdated for a long time. Samsung and all these different companies are coming out with like bezel-less displays trying to get ahead of Apple with technology and Apple have finally actually just brought out the bezel-less phone now and I'm wondering as to why they're bringing it out and why they haven't innovated for it. You see, Apple created the first proper smartphone that really worked. It was like a proper decent phone. Everyone loved it and it just worked. Then a lot of these companies jumped on the boat to create some amazing smartphones and they have done like Samsung have created amazing smartphones and I don't really mind those kind of phones. I'm just an Apple fanboy. And they've been going ahead and pushing further in technology than Apple but what we see is that Apple isn't really innovating with technology anymore. They're just sort of catching up. And everyone sort of sees Apple now as not the first people to create something, but the first company to create something that works very, very well. Okay, so let's get on to the design of the iPhone X. Apple is known to create simple designs, and this is where technology goes. And it's the same with logo design and graphic design. Sometimes the simplest things work the best for the majority of the people. Apple say less is more, and I think that is very true. And it's funny now how you're seeing that the full bezel-less display, which is a dream that Apple have had for ages, has come to life and less is really more. The less buttons on the screen means more screen means more consuming of the screen. The next step for Apple will be to create a full screen iPhone. So like the, the sensors are inside the screen. I'm not even sure if that's even possible, but I think that's the next dream to come up with. What I've learned from the new iPhone 10 is that less is really more. You could look at this iPhone and say, wow, look at that. That's weird because it's just one slate. It's not got many buttons in it. Where's the functionality? Or you could look at it and say, look at the possibilities inside this. We could use software to actually go home in the iPhone, or we could use software to wake the iPhone by just tapping on the screen. We could use software for all of these things. So perspective is huge. And the way that Apple market their perspective on the phones and the way that technology is now, everyone wants to see a bezel-less display. It's very exciting to see a phone that is literally just like a screen. It's just pure screen, no buttons. Kind of like the iMac, but without the bezels. What I've learned about iPhone 10 and Apple in general is the whole ethos behind simplicity in my designs. So for me as a logo designer, I create logo types, but I do that in a vintage way. So I'm a vintage logo designer 
by trade. I love creating typography and hand lettering that's vintage, but it's so important to know how to create something simple, and that's the main work that you've got to put into it. Something that I find really strange that no one's really talking about very much is how Apple take a negative of having a notch in the middle of the screen, like a random notch, and they make it look good. They've taken something that functionally needs to be there, but made it into something that looks nice. I'm not saying that it will be not better without that notch. I think it would be better without that notch, but no one seems to be really complaining because of the functionality of it and because they've made it look nice. Now, what if we said that about our design work? If we we're like, a, if you're a designer or an artist and something needs to be in there, how could we put artistic nature and the good design into something that functionally needs to be there in our work? And this includes the bezel. You can see on the actual icon here, that the, it is a bezel-less phone, really, but there is still a quite a big bezel there on the phone, but it looks nice because of the form factor of the phone. They have really gone ahead and made this phone look nice, even with the downsides to it. And something else that's really striked me about Apple and the way that they market their things after seeing this is looking at the colors that they're using on the screen. So you can see that they have an OLED screen now, like a very nice OLED Super Retina HD screen on the iPhone 10, And you can see that it looks amazing, not because it's right there, but because of the color choices they've used. They have really put it in everything, all their design into the screen and making it look nice for people to watch. I sat up this morning after the event and uh, I looked on Instagram and I scrolled down and there was an ad from Apple talking about the new iPhone 10. And you can see that it was a super OLED display and you can see it was a really nice display. And you're thinking to yourself, what a nice display. What I would look, I would give for that. You know, that is an awesome phone. I want it. And that's not because the phone's right in front of me to experience the display. That is simply because they have marked it to me and they've made me think that screen looks amazing. They're trying to prove a point that there's a lot of color in the screen. It's very flowy. Everything is so natural within the screen. It's kind of like having paint inside of your phone where if you move it, the actual paint moves. That's kind of like the natural instincts of Apple to create something that is textured and something that you can feel and imagine to feel on the screen. And also, if you look at iOS 11, I've got the iOS 11 betas on my phone and uh, uh, on my iPad as well. And you can see that even the icons have been made simpler. So the actual App Store icon is no longer like this 3D icon. It's a very, very simplified version of the old icon. Before you could see it was a pencil and a brush and stuff like that. Now you can't really tell. It's just like these sticks, but it's a lot nicer for some reason. And that's because people like simplicity. Now, when does simplicity go to the point where it's ridiculously simple? There's a few logos that I've seen in my time, which are just squares or dots, like literal circles with a bit of color in it. Now this can work depending on the company, but that's genuinely too simple. No one's going to look at that and say that's that company. Aside from the only company that I've seen it is the NSPCC is to like stop child abuse and stuff like that, where they had the green dot and then people would brand that into a pin that you could put on you and it would show that you've got this green pin, which means stop child abuse now. And that was the whole ad campaign. Apple aren't too simple at the minute, I don't think, but that is just my opinion. I thought you guys may value my opinion. If you do, then leave a like down below and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the new iPhone 10. It'll be interesting to hear your thoughts. I'm gonna pre-order it and get it and then hopefully show you guys about it on this channel for tech for designers uh, and hopefully point out some of the new things that I find within the phone as we go along with it. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure you click at the end of the video to one of my previous logo design critique videos which are currently out now. Remember to subscribe. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.